So it's time to talk about death. Certainly not the most exciting of topics, but yet one that must be explored because it is inevitable. So we must then consider how to understand death. And this has three components to it. The human being, the bodiless being, and finally the eternal being. Let's start with the human being. Because to understand how death affects us, we first must understand us. So the human being has two primary parts. That is the material body, which lives in the material world, and the soul, which lives in the spiritual world. And this is why we call ourselves human beings. We have a spiritual being, a soul, and we have material humanity. We're a human being. And the link between these two worlds, the binding of these two elements, is what makes us so special. There is no other creation that is both material and spiritual. But we're the same person. More than this, though, we have a purpose, a design, an intention, and that is to bring something from the spiritual world into the material world. And again, this is something that no other creation understands or even experiences. We alone have this drive to bring something from the spiritual world into the material world. So that's the human being, which we all are. So how does death affect the human being? And that is, of course, making a bodiless being. When we die, the material portion of our nature ceases to exist. Now, the true we, the identity, the free-willed natured soul is still there. And we still want to express ourselves. We still want to bring something into the material world. But without a body, we have no way to access the world that we desire to impact. So we're simply a soul. Now, there are many theories as to what happens as soon as the body leaves. Some say that we go to heaven, others that we go to hell, and there's a lot of other theories as well. The most reasonable conclusion, though, is that the soul stays where it is. Which initially, that doesn't sound so bad, right? I get to stay here. Well, no, not here in the material world, without the body, you can no longer have consciousness, no thoughts, no emotions, no actions, no experiences at all. And yet we still have the desire to have all those things, but we can't. We just exist where we are as a spiritual being presently, which again, doesn't sound so bad, but what do we spend our entire existence doing? We're trying to think, feel, and act our way to somewhere else, to something else, to become someone else. Why? Because we don't like where we are spiritually. We don't like who we are spiritually. We don't like what we have spiritually. So we're using the material world to try to get somewhere. But as soon as the body dies, we're stuck where we are for all eternity. So enough waiting it's, it's very dark and bleak there, yet there is a solution, the eternal being. And of course, there is only one eternal being, God. However, we all aspire to be like him. So how do we preserve our humanity to experience the eternal being of humanity? Well, the central problem in death is the cessation of our humanity. When the body goes, we can no longer be a human being. We're still a being, but just not human. Now, here's the interesting thing. When we have something in our lives that no longer can fulfill its purpose, what do we do with it? Well, we, we throw it out, don't we? Well, of course, you always throw something out as soon as it can no longer fulfill its purpose. A human being was designed to bring spiritual substance into the material world. 
Now, once we can no longer do that, we're simply discarded. Unless God makes a way to preserve our humanity, which he has done. First, he allows a spiritual union with the soul. But this doesn't solve the problem. Remember, we're a dual world being. We need a body. The soul doesn't fit anywhere else. So we had to find a way to bring a body into union with our soul, which of course he did. He came and took a human body for himself. Why though? Well, so that we could be held in that body, preserved our humanity would be preserved through a union with God because there's a human body there that we can be held within. And this is our ark. Now, we won't be able to think, feel, or act with that body because it's God's. He took it for himself. But because the body is made to hold a human soul, we can be placed there in a dreamless consciousness, consciousless sleep for as long as is required. Well, required to do what? Well, to rebuild the material world that we've unfortunately corrupted. So as we are preserved in the ark, and when the time is right, the material world will be remade and we will be awakened from our dreamless sleep and placed into a new material body, which will then allow us to think, feel, and act again and impact creation, but a new creation with a new body, all amidst an unbroken relationship with God. And this is the picture of what he's done for us. He didn't simply create a spiritual bond. He took a body into the Trinity, a human body, so that we could be preserved. Our humanity could be preserved and return us eventually to our own body with a remade material world. So that's how to understand death. It's the cessation of our human being. We simply become a being, a bodiless being. But the eternal being, God, has made a way to preserve us by taking a body himself and holding us there until the time is right. So when the body dies, the soul remains, unless held within God's eternal body. Now, beneath all this discussion, there's something important to consider. Who actually holds who? Now, it seems reasonable in this material world to see that the world is holding our body, right? And then the body's holding the soul. But if we follow that, that would mean our soul is holding God a delusion and a perversion which is worthy of eternal damnation in that unknown, empty place that we exist in presently, just being stuck there and discarded for all of eternity. But what if it's the other way around? What if God holds our soul, then our soul holds our body, and then our body holds the world?